in the book, I want to go through a lot of the, the, the community building type of stuff, though, too. Because I think that these are the type of things, like small manufacturing in general, in northern Ohio. I, I specify northern Ohio just because of the large uh, amount of empty buildings that we have in a networked fashion from Detroit down to Pittsburgh, pretty much, through uh, Youngstown, at least. And there's just all of these factories going under because they all relied on heavily on that assembly line type of method that's all leaving. So it's leaving us with a, with a huge gap, you know, that we can fill, I think, with small manufacturing. If, if, if each town can, like, buy its own building, like just one of the buildings in its town in Norwalk, Ohio, we have at least five or six just big buildings just empty, you know, that could be easily be utilized for this type of project. Any kind of, like, the hacker spaces that are happening right now over in Akron here in Cleveland, like, these are the type of things that need to be popping up in all communities. Because these are, like, I mean, it would be nice to have community tools to use. You know, not to mention the ability to make your own tools, to make your own car, or, you know. And, and basically, like, that type of thing, building these things would, would supply its own, it would keep itself afloat. Another thing you might want to look into is, uh, we and my dad always talk about it, and, like, I mean, we're, we're mechanically inclined, we work on our cars, like, I mean, I like to be, like, hands-on. Yeah. But I really have nowhere to go and really get into it. I don't have anywhere to, like, I, I don't have a lift, I don't have yeah. some of the more expensive parts. So, uh, what we wanted to do, and I, I don't know if we'd be able to do it, or, I just throw this idea out there, someone else wants to do it, I think it would work. But okay. uh, make a shop that you can go to, and you can just wrap time. So, like, you can just, like, I mean, because... Uh, That's a good idea. have the resources in their house to build one of the key magic cards. So, I mean, if you yeah. just have a spot where they can come, and then you may have, like, a mechanic on duty that if you have any questions, like, go ask him. But he doesn't have to do anything. He just answers questions. Yeah. And Tell you how to work the tools, how to work the machines, you know. So, but I, I think that would be a good idea, because I think it would get people working on their things again. Yeah. I think that's right, and I think that's a good perspective from the private sector to actually just, I mean, people can go in, they have money, buy these buildings up, put tools in them, you know, rent out time. I mean, I'm thinking of it from an uh, aspect of, you know, uh, the towns, you know, using public money, but, you know, a lot of people don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I mean, it's just somewhere that people could go and work on what they have. Either way, I think that's, I mean, that's needed. To, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Oh, yeah. Really? Huh. Okay. I didn't know that. I, I've, I've heard those guys talk a bunch of times, you know, but, like, I haven't gotten into it. Yeah. Obviously, there's a ton of abundance. Yeah. Uh, but it's tiered, right? So Very much so. So you suddenly have a bunch of people who used to have gainful work, mm -hmm. and now that's gone. It's not that the work isn't being done, it's just being done in a much more efficient way, and the owners are the ones who are the benefits. So you kind of have the lower tier, and it seems like because we can make things faster than than we use them you know like we're and then we plan for them to break because of that you know and that's not good for I mean you're, you're losing money on both ends and you're losing resources true <laughs> yeah. Oh, the open source ecology. Yeah, I'll put that back up here. Yeah, there, uh, there's some interesting guys. Uh, I seen them give a uh, talk about two years ago. Yeah, that's their logo. Oh, on the safety aspect. Um, what we're we have a lot more safety features than what they had originally. We have 
uh, because, I mean, they didn't really have safety standards back in the 50s and 60s for these cars at all. But um, we're putting in roll bars, we're designing them with roll bars, we're designing them with seat belts. We have more of like a side, um, like shoulder supports now, rather than just being held in by the car door latch, you know. Um, but yeah, my dad looks into that heavily. He worked with crash test dummies for, I mean, he still does. He's, he's been doing that for a good, almost probably over 30 years now, he's been designing crash test dummies. And this has always been his like, you know, kind of hobby business that he's been running. And that's how he pays for it, basically. Well, they're kit cars. You know, you have to license them as kit cars, basically. Um, well, I know that, uh, I mean, you have to have all the lights. There's certain safety protocol that you have to have, just brakes and, like, um, it's, they're not real, you know, strict. I mean, as long as, like, I mean, these, these, the, the stuff that we're putting on here is, is well tested, just golf cart stuff. And at low speeds, I mean, you're not, you're not looking at anything really strict either, you know. We're not looking to get on the highway with these things, although some people do. And you just have to, I mean, they're different in every state, but mainly just lights and brakes and, you know, you have to have a roll bar now kind of thing, you know, but... Um, those are the main main three things you got to hit. I don't know. I wouldn't imagine. You know, maybe more than fifty dollars, fifty two hundred, maybe. I, I haven't priced it in a. We haven't. Uh, we haven't actually started selling these things. We're developing the kits right now. As far as we're gotten right now, we almost have an entire new prototype, which we're going to base the whole plans off of. So this is about our sixth prototype that we've made, and um, this is this is the one that we're just going to base all the plans off of. So then after that, we can start you know getting orders in and seeing where it goes from there. Basically, well, what we should uh, as soon as we get it on the road and everything like that, we'll have to license it. So we'll know about that whole process here pretty soon. But uh, any <clears throat> any plans to do Kickstarter? For your uh, open source Kickstarter. Yeah, open source. I've thought of that, yeah. yeah. Um, we we want to get to a certain point before we do that. Okay. But that would definitely be um, a, a good way to start this whole thing out, you know? Cool. Uh, so, but yeah. An another question What are the top three hurdles for this year? Like for this year? Yep, yeah, quarter two, three, and four. Um, for the company in general. Well, the first one, we're definitely about to jump, you know, is basically finishing the car, painting the car, um, getting it all ready for show and starting displaying it. And then the second big thing is writing the book. And my, my huge part of it is going to be this whole talk, and ba it's, it's going to be based off all of these kind of small manufacturing ideas. And then, you know, Dad's a great tech, tech guy to ask about all this stuff, so, like, I'm going to be just, like, kind of, it's going to be a big collaborative thing. Um, and then after that, basically, getting the word out would be the last thing. Start advertising. Cool. What's the story on the drivetrain? Are you using them based on the, uh, on the, on the golf carts? Or? Yeah, you can. And that's, that's a, a really easy way to do it. Um, but it's, we're going to set up the plan so that you can use anything that you want. Because we want to have, you know, like, uh, natural gas or electric. We're building the first one electric and we're doing it with with the actual golf cart motor that comes in them originally but we're just overpowering it so that it can get up to some better speeds, you know. Um, but Well, batteries, we're just using lead acid batteries right now. <laughs> because, I mean, and you know about it, like, uh, I mean, if we used uh, Lithium ion batteries. I mean that. I mean it's lighter. You get more power. But uh, the way to compare those two is like you have a whole car full of lead acid batteries. You have a whole car full of lithium ion batteries. It's like having one gallon of gas compared to having two gallons of gas. It's really the range over price. You know, like how far do you want to go for, you know, for the you know, because lithium ion batteries are at least three or four times as much. I would say. For the, it's coming down to power, old power drills, old laptops. Yeah. Coming, they're, they're flat now, they're flat. Exactly. 
the more the more they produce them in mass quantities, the the cheaper they're going to be. And and those guys at Tesla are doing that stuff, and it's it's really working out for them. Do you have a standardized transmission, or is that going to vary? Um, the transmission. We're, we were gearing up to start building some of the original King Midget transmissions that had forward reverse. And um, those work really well with, uh, you know, your twin horse engines, like the up to about 24 horse or even more than that. Um, but uh, and, and as far as the electric carts, you, you, don't, you don't need a transmission. Uh, but that's definitely something that we're going to have to look at here seriously to see how many of these we can actually produce uh, at a time because it's kind of a meticulous work. We're actually building the gears and some of the stuff inside of it. We have a lot of surplus stuff actually left over from the factory, from, from the original Midget Motors factory. We have a lot of the surplus parts that we've been basically selling off for, for all the old cars. Um, so we're using a lot of those parts to keep all the other cars on the road running. Uh, I've had a couple guys give me a couple good leads on some transmissions, but we haven't tested any as of yet. Um, so. That'd be something good to. Uh, that's going to be the next big step for the, for the gasolines. What about differentials? Uh, differentials, uh, you can get. Um, those are pretty readily available through uh, Comet Industries. They provide a lot of the clutches that we use too. We use like a snowmobile type of style clutch. Um, they're they're doing pretty well making those differentials. You just need the the axles for it and everything, you know. Um, there's been a couple different designs. I've seen a few different guys, um, you know, build some pretty elaborate systems for what it is, you know. Uh, but you don't need anything too fancy. Any other questions? All right, check us out at midgetmotors.com. Uh, thank you very much. I'll be outside talking next to the car here, sitting right outside.